Let's have a look at uh, volumes. See, integration not only is it useful for finding areas, it can be used for volumes as well. We start off looking at very simple shapes, shapes that basically have a, a circular cross section. And as we build through it, and we'll, we'll see an extension too, where we can look at all other sorts of shapes as well. So we've got this, again, random function. If I was to actually uh, rotate this shape from, say, A up to B, and we were to rotate it around the x-axis, we'd end up with some sort of solid. And that solid would have a circular cross-section. And what we can basically do is the same idea we did for integration. Uh, with integration, remember, we said, oh, look, if we were to think of this as a series of rectangles and adding all the rectangles together, and if the width of those rectangles were so close to zero that we could think of them as having the same height, um, same idea. Except now, instead of saying a series of rectangles, we have a series of cylinders, very thin cylinders. We would like the height of that cylinder to be very close to zero. And in extension two, we'll investigate that idea of using the limits and, and what have you a lot closer. For two unit and three unit, we're allowed to just jump straight to the formula. So we say, well, volume is solid revolution. If we're going around the, uh, the x-axis, then it turns out to be pi times the integral of y squared dx. And the easy way of remembering it is we're going around dx axis. So it's y squared <laughs> dx. Uh, so where does that come from? Well, remember we're saying it, we're summing a whole heap of cylinders. Now the height, let's say, is approaching zero, but the circular cross section would have an area of pi r squared. Well, pi is a constant. I can bring that to the front of the uh, integral. And the radius of these circles would be the y value. And that's basically where the formula comes from. So pi times the integral of y squared dx. And so if we were going around the y-axis, then it would be pi times the integral of x squared the y. Right. So using this idea, we can now prove some formula that uh, you've taken just to be true. Right? You were told that the formula for the volume of a cone was 1 third pi r squared h back in year whatever, and you blindly accepted it and went, oh, fantastic, let's now sum into this formula and away we go. Let's prove it. If I rotate this line, could be any line, so y equals mx goes through the origin. If I was to rotate that around the x-axis at a point which I'll call h, because that'll create the height of the cone, there we go, rotate it, we end up with a cone. The volume of that shape, well, pi times the integral of y squared dx. We've just said y is mx. So we're going to integrate m squared x squared from naught to h. Well, m squared's a constant, so I can bring that out the front. Add one to the power over the power, a third x cubed. Sub in h, sub in zero, and we get this formula, one third pi m squared h cubed, which is the formula for a cone. We're not used to seeing it that way because, of course, it's got it in terms of the slope of the actual cone itself. So we can uh, substitute in. And so our slope would be the radius over the height of the cone. So I can substitute in R on H over there for the slope. And sure enough, it comes out to be 1 third pi R squared H. Thus proving our formula, as I say, that you blindly accepted to be true in the past. Now we can prove it. Isn't that great? This is wonderful. Let's do a sphere. So we know we've got a circle. x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. If I was to rotate a circle, I'd get our sphere. Whee. There we go. Actually, I'm not rotating the circle. I'm actually rotating the semicircle. Because we need to do a complete revolution. If it was just a circle, I'd only have to rotate well, 180 degrees to get the sphere. So we need to do a complete revolution. So it's actually the semicircle that I'm going to rotate to get the sphere. So pi times the integral of y squared dx will go from, well, I'm going to use the symmetry of the shape. I'm going to go from 0 to r, but say, well, it's going to be twice that, of r squared minus x squared dx. Add one to the power over power. So we get r squared x minus a third x cubed. Sub r in. And there's our familiar formula, 4 thirds pi r cubed. 
We're now going to uh, rotate y equals x squared, our parabola, around the y-axis. And when we rotate a parabola, the shape we get is a paraboloid. So there's our parabola. We're going to go between y equals 0 and y equals 1. Rotate around the y-axis. So there it is, our paraboloid. But this time we're going around the y-axis. Well, I don't have to do any rearranging. Because actually, it's not x I substitute in for, it's x squared. And we know x squared is equal to y. So I don't have to make x the subject like we do with areas. We need to make x squared the subject. It already is. So we're going to integrate y to y. Y to y, because we're going around the y-axis. OK. Now, add 1 to the power, over the power. We get y squared on 2, sub in. There's our answer, pi on 2 units cubed. OK, the shaded region. This sort of question is the one that catches people out. Because the volume people tend to find when we go around the x-axis here is not the shaded region. They tend to find the unshaded region, which would actually end up being the, well, the hole, if you like, that's going to be taken out of this shape. So when we rotate it, it's actually between, like we did with um, areas, we have boundaries. Top one minus the bottom one. And so each of those will create a radius, but you square them before subtracting because you're saying it's this area minus this area. So the top shape is the, uh, or top boundary, is just simply the horizontal line y equals 5. So it'll be 5 squared minus the uh, bottom boundary is the line y equals 5x. So that'll be 5x squared. So we're going to integrate 25 minus 25x squared. And again, integrating, add 1 to the power over the power, taking out the common factor of 25 there to make life a little bit easier for ourselves. There's our answer. Of course, reality is I wouldn't do it that way. Remember what I said? If you've got a formula, use it. What are we essentially doing here is we're rotating this horizontal line around. I'm going to end up with a cylinder. And I'm going to take away a cone. And I have a formula for both of those. So in this case, it would have been quicker to go pi r squared h minus a third pi r squared h, giving me two-thirds pi r squared h. Radius is 5, height is 1. There's our answer. So always keep that in mind. If it's a regular shape and you've already got a formula for it, we don't need to integrate. We can actually work it out using our formulas that we already know. Here's one from an HSC. So we've got an upside-down parabola. 12 minus 2x squared, and our traditional y equals x squared. Well, first one, point of intersection. Because we're going to go around, you'll notice a little diagram of a rotate. We're going to go around the y-axis here. And so again, we've got boundaries that are changing. Starts here, it's the upside down parabola going to the y-axis. But then <coughs> we hit a point and it is y equals x squared. So this point of intersection is going to become important because that's when we're going to change shapes. So we're going to find that point of intersection, solve them simultaneously, and we end up with plus or minus 2. Um, obviously, the one we're looking at is positive 2, but we're more interested in the y value because we're going around the y-axis. So 4 is more the, the interesting number that we want. OK. The shaded region is now rotated around the y-axis. And again, they've given us a bit of a hint by splitting the region into two parts. Or otherwise, don't know what the otherwise would be, by the way. Find the volume of the solid. So there's our shape. Pi, we're going around the y-axis, x squared the y. Oop. So the top one, I'm going to need to make x squared the subject. Well, it already is, so I know the top one is going to be, sorry, the bottom one is going to be y, uh, just y. Now... The bottom one, making x squared the subject, I'll get 6 minus a half y. So I'm going from 0 to 4 on 6 minus a half y. Hang on. And 4 to 12 of y. Got, that's the wrong way around, isn't it? Oops. Oh. 
No, no, it's six minus a half y. That's that bit's right. My limits I've got on the wrong integrals there. The six minus a half y should be going from four to twelve, yeah. and the uh, the uh, y to y should be going from naught uh, to four. Consequently, my answer will be wrong, but you get the idea. <laughs> Oops. So this particular shape, which is not the one that we have here, but this particular one would be 84 pi. I wonder what the actual one is. Oh, look. Oh, it's gone now. What, what happened? I can't remember. 11G. <laughs>